Hey everyone, welcome to MLSsoccer.com's Brazil Bound, presented by Castrol GTX High Mileage. I'm Greg Lalas, alongside former U.S. National Team Assistant Coach Jesse Marsh, and we are here today to start a series of post-mortems for the U.S. team after they went out of the World Cup against Belgium in the round of 16 on Tuesday afternoon. We're kind of getting over the, the grief, or starting the grieving process about this, but Jesse, let's start breaking down what we saw, yeah. and let's start by giving me your three players that impressed you in this. Yeah, well, I think when you break down the three best players, you have to start with Timmy Howard. Yeah. And there was a lot of talk about field players and who was the best player on the team on the field. Well, I think in some ways we forgot the goalkeeper because Timmy showed uh, what he's about, his leadership, the saves he made against Belgium were unbelievable. And the thing I thought he did really well that game was that he didn't lean or guess. So, you know, you could go through some of the other goals and the other games and say, ah, maybe he could have stood up a little bit better and, and now made a little, given himself a chance to make the save. But this time he waited to the shot, reacted, made the save. So I think he came out number one. Well, 16 saves against Belgium, setting a new World Cup record for saves in a game. And of course, I agree with you. I feel like he also got better as the tournament went on because he maybe had a couple of moments in those early games that it didn't work out. What about on the field, some players that you liked? Yeah, I think next I would go to Jermaine Jones. Mm -hmm. And I think his overall package of covering ground, making it hard, being mobile and in the attack. So there were a lot of times where we needed an outlet pass and someone to be further up the field because we didn't have guys always up there. And, and Jermaine was able to provide that at different moments. And then he obviously scored a great goal uh, and a big goal. So, and, and when you talk about Jermaine, I think it's also good to talk about and appropriate to talk about the whole German-American influence on this national team. You know, they scored three of the five goals but even more of that, more than that, they brought athleticism, talent, experience, and, and they fit into the American team and the American mentality. And, and that, for me, was one of the best things to see, is to now really see the group galvanize itself, even with these guys that came from halfway across the world, and, and they took so much pride in playing for our country, too. It's important to emphasize the American part as opposed to the German-American yeah. in all of this. Absolutely. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, there have been some reports and rumors that Jermaine Jones may be signing with an MLS, an MLS club. We'll see what comes uh, out that of that. That would be great. Now, uh, there's a defender that you really liked as well. Yeah, I think Matt Beasler showed such a steadiness and a reliability and an ability to read plays and, you know, held up against some competition that was very athletic, very talented tactically was really sound, you know, and, and, and maybe it caught up with a little bit in the extra time against Belgium where now just the pure physicality of the World Cup maybe caught up with him a little bit in the end. But, but I, I thought he was a reliable piece going in and he proved to be, I think, even more reliable than any of us thought. And, and you know, it's, it's good to see a guy that's kind of grown up in MLS and has been such a, a, a big factor in Kansas City's uh, success over the past few years to really be able to now show what he's all about on the on the world stage. I mean, we could probably throw Kyle Beckerman into that as well. He didn't play against Belgium, but certainly had a good tournament. And and you, before we let finish this one off, I mean, you were pretty impressed with some of the young guys as well. Yeah, well, f and first, along with the young guys, is I, I love that Jurgen Klinsmann showed a willingness and a belief to throw in the young guys in some big moments. And you know, it's a reminder for him and a reminder for all his coaches that. Yeah, with, with young players sometimes comes big risk, but in this case, and, and often is the case, it comes with big reward. So I thought that Yedlin, when he had to come on the field, and now to come in in the round of 16 and be subbed into the game in the first half like he was, and now to play in that manner and, and to play with no fear, to go after the game, to compete, to cover ground, that was fun to watch. And that's, that has to do a lot with the American spirit, I think, too. But, but Green came on when he needed to, scored a, scored a great goal, and, and now showed, you know, I mean, the, the jury's still out a little bit on him, but certainly that he came into that game and showed no fear. Brooks showed no fear when he had to come in against Ghana, scores a huge goal that really is the goal that gets us to the second round. So, you know, I mean, that, that part was great, and I think it bodes well for the future. We're going to talk a little bit more about the future in this post-mortem series. That's it for this episode of MLSsoccer.com's Brazil Bound, presented by Castrol GTX High Mileage. I'm Greg Lalas. He's Jesse Marsh. Make sure you check out the full series.